Hello Rejects, Greg here. And John here. We're gonna watch from our friends at Top 5 Unknowns, and they are friends. We're gonna watch five films dash movies that <laughs> mysteriously kill people in real life. Wow. Wow, I don't know how that's possible. Unless it's like a last action hero kind of scenario. I'm sure we're gonna find out though. Five movies that horrifyingly killed people in real life. Every once in a while, you'll <laughs> see a so movie exciting. that really inspires you or gets under your skin. While for most of us, that means we become cheerful or depressed for the rest of the day, there are people out there who let their emotions rule the show. And their emotions are not what you or I consider to be constructive or positive in no. any way possible. These five now iconic movies have affected the masses, oh, yeah, passion of the but Christ, for a couple of mentally on edge folks, these cinematic features caused them to kill or die themselves. Number five, Twilight. What? What? This vampire romance series exploded overnight, it seemed like. While most of the fans were comprised of overzealous 12-year-olds, there were a few older people who enjoyed this franchise. Enter a middle-aged recluse what? of a man who lived in New Zealand what? and decided he wanted to see the movie one evening. He travelled to the theatre, got his ticket, and sat down for the 6pm showing. Okay. Only he didn't get up again after the movie ended. After the rest of the crowd had cleared out, an employee of the theatre found the man dead in his seat. What? Police quickly arrived on the scene. Despite an in-depth investigation, nobody could figure out why the man had died. Puzzled what? by the mysterious the death, fuck? many New Zealanders waited to hear the results of the man's autopsy. But the results were never made public and never discussed again. Wait a minute. The whole thing has some folks wondering. Did the man become inspired to die in the hopes of returning as a vampire? Or was the movie so lousy he died of boredom? Probably. We will likely never Jokes. know. Number f wow, to die at twilight. Yeah, that's a day, hey, man. I haven't heard the other ones. That should be number one. That's <laughs> I wonder How what sad to die during that film. <laughs> That makes all me films wonder, to die at. See, now I really want to know what this guy's life was like, because, like, did he come out... Now I want to know why he came out to see this movie, because, like, how reclusive was he? Did he go to movies ever, or was he like, today is the day? Yeah, I'm exactly. Gonna, I'm going out today, and I'm going to do it at twilight. I mean, he went out alone. Yeah? Who goes... Who's an adult male that goes out alone to watch Twilight? Yeah, I mean, I go to movies alone sometimes, but I wouldn't go, I wouldn't watch, go to watch Twilight, twilight. alone. <laughs> And it was you just need such a, a crowd for just such a horrible film. That's the worst friends. way to die there. Yeah, I wouldn't want to. I would want to die during a better film if I had to die during. A film. I, if I were to die during a film, I would want to die maybe during like. I, it would either have to be like a. I'm not done. Oh. I got nothing. I don't know. If I was to die in a movie, I'd want it to be either like a. Like a revival screening of something I really love, or like some movie I've been like super duper looking forward to. The Passion of the Christ. Passion of the Christ, too. Right when Jesus finally dies. You die. What does he say when he dies? It is time or something? It's I, done? I forgot what he says. When I'm, he dies. Finished. No, I'm finished. I'm <laughs> finished. Yeah, it would be perfect if I could die to... right when the movie's done. Like right when the credits start rolling. And then the people who made the film are disrespected because I didn't stick around. Till the end of the credits. Plus, you missed the post credit scene. The Passion of the Christ. <laughs> hey, this speaking of. <laughs> controversial film hit theaters. It wasn't that uncommon to see whole families sprinting out of the building with tears in their eyes afterwards. Jim Caviezel played Jesus Christ and is seen enduring the brutal treatment Jesus was subjected Ugh. to. But it would seem that uh. God did not appreciate this take on human history. It's reported that Caviezel was literally struck by lightning while they filmed a scene by a tree. But that's not all. Once an employee for ABC News, a woman named Peggy Law decided to see the film in theatres. Hey. Apparently, conservative Peggy had no idea that the movie depicted so much gore and violence. She was <laughs> overcome with emotion and shock How did at you what not they hear showed. That? By the time the scene of the crucifixion happened, Peggy couldn't handle any more. She succumbed to a heart attack as oh, the scene man. took place and died within minutes. Uh, oh, I take many back that joke. Wow, that Peggy's death, yeah. Along with the wayward lightning bolt, a signs from above that God did not approve of the stylings of this most controversial film. Number three. Oh boy. Okay, so I was totally joking. <laughs> did not know that was a real scenario that actually happened. Take that back. I uh, I take that back. I'm asking for We're forgiveness. Learning. 
See, this um, is a great this is a great experience because you know we we made a joke and then we were given a little bit more to chew on and now we're going back and we're revising. Yeah. Our thought process. Um, that was not perhaps the best yeah. joke to make, but it's okay. Uh, I mean, We've, we're learning. It's weird that when you make a joke and then you find it really happens, you realize how horrible the situation actually is. It makes you a little more conscious going forward. When that movie came out, because we were in Catholic school at the time when that came out, mm -hmm. that movie inspired me to go to church more. I would go to church after class. I remember that, yeah. Yeah, I would go by myself. 3 p.m. Pray to Jesus and Mel. It was a good time. But I remember hearing a story about someone who loved it, who, who was so moved by that movie that they like confessed, they went to the police station and confessed to a murder. Wow. They were, they felt so guilty about it. I think in the end it did save some lives or got some type of retribution or justice done. But yeah. Um, that's horrible. It's too bad they didn't have a Red Band trailer for Passion of the Christ for Peggy to know that. See, that's the thing is I, I'm a little surprised that she didn't Because wasn't that the whole anything. big draw of it? Yeah, like this That it's all second, about Jesus being tortured for 12 hours? Yeah, yeah, the second that movie came out, that was what everyone was talking about. You know, like it didn't seem like anybody didn't know how intense that movie was going to be. Oh, it's, it's so bad. She all went by herself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can't I, watch Passion of the Christ by yourself in a theater. You gotta go at least with like a priest and a nun. You know, for a few friends, get some beers. Yeah, get some beers. You feel really bad about I'm all that guy the transgressions the in your life. popcorn, throwing my crunch bites in there. <laughs> hey, that guy exists. You know, yeah. <laughs> there was one of you know, that Michael guy Moore in was every in the audience. Theater. <laughs> hey, man, I've eaten popcorn during some questionable films. <laughs> Myth the damned. When most people think about this less than Queen exceptional movie from the, the 90s, damned. they think about Aaliyah and her most untimely death in an aeroplane crash in yeah. 2001. Oh. But Aaliyah's death had nothing to do with this mediocre sequel to the film interview with the vampire. That's in this funny. installment, the notorious vampire Lestat becomes acquainted with an ancient vampire queen played by Aaliyah. One day, Tom McKendrick asked his buddy Alan Menzies if he wanted to come over to his house to watch the movie. Alan was so enamored with the movie and the Vampire Queen, he asked Tom if he could borrow it. Alan then proceeded oh to watch the movie hundreds of times. Ah. He began to tell friends and family that the Vampire Queen started to visit him at night and speak to him. I heard about this, yeah. One oh night, boy. after becoming I convinced that the Vampire Queen wanted Alan to become immortal by killing someone for her, Alan decided he would have to find someone to kill. It was soon after when Tom made the poor choice of insulting the Vampire Queen in the movie. Alan became enraged and hit Tom over the head with a Oh blood. no! To complete the job, Alan then stabbed Tom multiple times, oh. drank his blood, and consumed half of the man's head. Oh. Not long after Alan was tried and convicted for the oh, murder, wow. he killed himself in prison. Number two. I think it's safe to say that film had an effect on certain people. Yeah, that's horrible. That's unfathomable. Oh my. <laughs> that would be a cool movie, though. That. <laughs> All joking aside, I mean. It's not a joke. <laughs> hmm. Had to proceed with the topic of death without being too offensive. I mean, that would be an interesting film. Because the film was a failure on many accounts. Box office, critical audience reception. Yeah. One man loved it so much that he saw it countless times. That it influenced him where he thought he saw... Was it the like... The, the, he, the, he thought he saw like Aaliyah? He thought he saw the Queen, Queen of the Damned, yeah. How crazy. This guy must have had some kind of mental disorder, like, oh, that, in his that's life. That's very clear. I mean, I've never had that wrong. happen with me. Something was wrong there. He took it home, watched it hundreds of times, claimed that she was coming to him and speaking to him, and it compelled him to kill somebody. But yeah. Like... I mean, I could get it, because when I saw the human centipede, the <laughs> amount of people I kidnapped and created a human centipede out of, you Shot know, that's way. why it's just you and I on the channel now. He was the only one I couldn't get. We you know, we got Brianna White in there. <laughs> Andrews in Andrew, the centipede. Dan Seiberg, Dan, Alyssa. Alyssa. It was it was crazy. Then I had that mental breakdown a few months ago when I was like not Ryan Wright anymore. I'm Greg Alba. It was partially related to that. Yeah, you know, just running out of people. I had the to centipede. realize and Ryan Wright is getting out of control, so I need to start yeah. doing something about it. It's hard when when centipeding people gives you a sense of purpose. Yeah. What's worse than that though is they stopped following me on Twitter. Oh yeah, that's that's a harsh, harsh penalty. Why, Alyssa? Because she can't tweet. It was anymore. for fun. This channel's just been taking a downhill slope <laughs> ever since that. 
it's, this is horrible. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> with this guy, it's fucking... I mean, it's just crazy. That's it's fucking insane. I've never yeah. heard of a film doing that before, where someone well, sees the fictional character, they believe it, and they act upon it because some guy insulted this like fictional character. I mean, I imagine that he probably knew of Aaliyah's death, and I don't know, might have affected him in some way where he kind of had some kind of split personality breakdown or something. Either way, it would be a no neat movie idea. to watch. I would, I would. I would like to see. I think, hey, you are for Bloomhouse. Talk to Jason Bloom. I don't tell know. That, that might be in poor taste. No, tell Bloomy. Call it Queen of the Goddamned. No. <laughs> We're not doing that. <laughs> American Psycho. Who doesn't love a movie about a crazy stockbroker from the 80s? American Psycho became a cult favorite. Batman and, and Joker. Theaters. While some viewers were equally entertained and sickened by Christian Bale's character, there were some who found him to be a bit too perfect. 14-year-old Michael Hernandez was an ordinary, albeit rather nerdy, young man. He admired many superheroes and some not-so-savory characters, such as Hannibal Lecter and Bale's Patrick Bateman in American Psycho. One afternoon, no. Michael decided he wanted to be like Patrick and attacked and killed one of his classmates Arr. at school. When Aww. his parents were questioned, both admitted that Michael showed signs of mental instability long before the murder occurred. Michael was tried and whisked off to prison. Number one. Wow, wow 14 years old. That's why it has to be 17 or older. What? 14 year old brains are just too influential. That easily influenced. Uh, John, no. John, listen. According to statistics, 95% of people who are under the age of 17 that watch an R-rated movie commit a violent crime. That's right. That's a, that's a that's, true statistic. If you statistic. go to statistics.org, you will see that that is an actual statistic. I'm glad that organization exists yes. to tell us these things. Taken from a wide variety of hundreds of kids. Totally. <laughs> Just to get a survey done totally. of the nation, you need to take it of hundreds of kids. <laughs> Children, because they're the future. So those results will last you. I mean, they all got paid seventy-five dollars to watch an R-rated film. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Trying to make light, really dark don't situations. Make, <laughs> don't make light. Is it? That is horrible. Ah. Though. That no, that seriously is is sad. I mean, the kid who he killed looked looked like a really innocent kid. Yeah, like, he just oh, really... like, those those pictures always break my heart when they're like happy. And, yeah, and you know, affable looking. These are upsetting to me because these make me wonder. It's like. What are the odds? What if that kid had never seen American Psycho? Would it have just been something else? Probably. Or if that other guy hadn't seen Queen of the Damned, like, would it, is it just waiting well, for the they, right thing? I mean, according to the, this video, they said that it was it was because he admired Patrick Bateman so much. And if you look at American Psycho, it's a, it's a definite character portrayal. It's a character study. So yeah. I could see someone becoming obsessed with who Patrick Bateman is. Because even in our society, for people who love that cult film, people like quote Patrick Bateman through the roof. We all are able to separate ourselves and know he's a psychopath. I mean, yeah. if you're a kid, I could see, I can see someone being, you know, admiring this. Patrick Dude. Bateman is not like some fat loser. He's <laughs> rich. He bones chicks. He's cut. Like he's all these things that. You know, like, a dude wants to sort of be. And what's weird is that they said that prior to this crime, didn't they say, like, his parents or somebody said that he showed clear signs of some type of mental disorder? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, mean they, they said that after the crime was committed. But, yeah, they said they noticed. If you uh, know your kid has certain signs like this, you shouldn't be showing them a film like American Psych. I mean, I Yeah, but maybe he, he just got his hands on it. Like, how? It's not that hard <laughs> to get a hold of a movie. Maybe. And we don't know how good a parent they Like, we don't know what their supervision was like. And, and really, they like... They were probably shitty parents. It's pretty hard to not... Like, if you want to see a movie and you're 14, you can probably make that happen. You know, if it's available. That's anyway. fair. That's relatively horrifying. That's why we should ban R-rated films. No, not at all. Ban R-rated movies. Maybe get your kids some help if they're demonstrating signs of... You know, like, after I saw Saw, <laughs> so many of the rejects... You know, like former rejects that were on in the beginning of this channel. Yep. My former neighbor Marie, Jeremy Shine, that redhead cat Doss. They did not like the games I set up for them to help them appreciate their life. And now we're not friends anymore. It's weird how people turn their back on you when you're just having some fun. Yep, it's real weird. It's, it's real weird. I don't understand it myself. Let's see what the number one choice is. 
natural born killers. Some movies become oh, yeah. so controversial that their own. creators are hardly surprised Irrelevant. when they get into trouble for their creative freedom. Such was the case for Oliver Stone, Quentin Tarantino, and Woody Harrelson, who rallied together to create the film Natural Born Killers. The movie centers around two young men Enjoy who become it, serial it. killers and are then sensationalized by the news. After the film debuted, many people blamed it for a surge in violent behavior. Two 18-year-old boys were caught robbing and killing at a bank shortly after they watched the film. Uh. The duo behind the Columbine shootings, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, used NBK as the codename for their plan. Ooh. A 17-year-old boy proceeded to shave his head after watching the movie, Ooh. then shot his mum and half-sister while they slept that night. It's impossible to say how many murders were inspired by this film, but let's just say there will always be those unstable people who take the movies just one step too far. I believe Natural Born Killer... I just read a story that we ran on the site that was about <laughs> this 12-year-old this girl and her, like, 20-something boyfriend, and they were really into Natural Born Killers, and, and they, like, murdered her parents so that they could be together. Oh, God. And I think I think it said that the Natural Born Killers was like their favorite movie. I just don't think all of your Stone's ah! films could ever have an effect like that again. He's <laughs> just not as good of a filmmaker anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's about. It's... I'm going to get so much crap for joking around during this video. <laughs> this is, yeah, you're pushing the boundaries, man. <laughs> of tastefulness. Anytime I watch a video like this, if I crack a single joke, people just rip me apart. You know, handle with care. Is, <laughs> just handle with care. There are a lot of really interesting arguments you can have about art and what it does to people. And it's like art doesn't. I don't think art makes people violent or, or makes these things happen. But you know, you never know when it's going to be the crucial piece of stimulus that's going to push somebody over the edge. Well, there's films that are totally opposite that have caused people to do terrible things. There was one guy who saw Avatar. Thought the life would never be as good as as it was in Avatar, so he killed himself. Jesus, I'm surprised that wasn't included in this. Avatar, a couple of people died during Avatar, I think. Because there was another guy. There was a similar story to the Patrick of the Christ one, where somebody had like a heart attack in the theater. Yeah, but okay, like if you look at the first story, like with the Twilight guy, like that might have had nothing to do with the movie itself. You know, like that guy just probably had it some type of. Yeah. Bodily shutdown or heart attack or some type of reaction. I feel like that story wasn't actually that crazy. It's just amusing because it's Twilight. Yeah, so exactly. Like there's that like, ah, oh, somebody died during Yeah, Twilight. yeah, totally. It was Avatar. That's PG-13. It's, it's for families. Made like billions of dollars. Deaths have occurred from that and someone killed himself because they thought life was just too, like, will never be as good as that. It's Sad. not the movie's problem. It's not what the movie did that's at fault here. It's... Yeah, it's totally. whatever is specifically tailored to these individuals that have something up with them <laughs> that causes yeah. them to react in a certain way. I just think it's an interesting discussion because, like, you do have to confront the fact that that's possible because it does happen. It's oh, like, totally, yeah. You know, I don't think you should censor movies or, or, you know, stop making things just because they might fall into the wrong hands. Like, that's sort of a risk you run with living. But it is an interesting thing to think about because you kind of have to at least think about it a little bit and be like, what do, is there anything we can do about this? Or do we just kind of have to hope, you know, that we can take better care of each other and, and you know, handle our art better in the process? Because, yeah, some of these stories are, are fucking horrifying. I mean, I know this isn't a movie, <coughs> but when I saw Breaking Bad, you know, like, and this channel started taking a dip when I came out as Greg Alba, I've had to resort to cooking a lot of meth. Yeah, you know? I know. You're not very good at I've it either. I live, I live in Van Nuys. I know. The I don't know how many people get that high off of it. It's hard, man. I wasn't very good at chemistry in class. Oh, nor was I. I didn't finish high school. Um, so. You got your GED. Yeah, but, you know, I, I didn't really just. No, they don't so, teach you much, much about meth on that. So when I, when I was, I you know, I, 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 like, I have, I've been having to sell meth, though, to make up for the fact that this channel took a, took a dip. And um, I blame it all on Breaking Bad. Brent, way it all way to not bad. take responsibility. Mm, it's not that. It's uh, it's just really who's at fault here, and I think it's the show. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. For for telling you how to live your hey, life. Hey, hey, you helped. I did. I did help. You helped. I'm impressionable, and I want to be cool more than anything. And if anyone knows who's cool, it's me. I've got a lot of pain deep down inside, and I want to make people pay for it because no I don't one know cares what to about do with it on my own. No one cares about your pain. Well, it helped you make a good batch of. <laughs> 
Oh, this is a video. <laughs> this is called defense mechanisms to real horrific things. <laughs> yeah, this is that like that Queen of the Dam story like is is That's legit horrifying to me to the point where yeah, it's it's almost like you want to make a joke only so that you can feel like the world is in an awful place. Well, what's just crazy about the Queen of the Dam situation is it wasn't like cool character. I'm inspired. It was like yes, yeah, like he, they, he fell believed in love it was with that. real. Like, you know, yeah, to watch something hundreds, it became an obsession. That's a serious thing. He probably thought it was like his his own personal film because no one saw it. <laughs> <laughs> yup. Anyway, reach out to the channel. Subscribe today. Don't forget to subscribe to Top 5 Unknowns. They're a fantastic channel. Have a lot of amazing info-filled videos. John has reasons to Jerry on Twitter and Instagram. He's also the social media manager of FB.com slash Bloomhouse and The Real Rejects. FB standing for... Fuck Borat. I enjoyed Borat a lot. Nah, I yeah, like Borat thing. too. Let's change that. Fuck Bat. No, I like Batman a lot actually. Fuck. If I say bitches, it's just the total. That's the go-to one. That's just an um, easy one. What's up? There's gotta be more B movies, right? B movie. Starring Jerry Seinfeld as a B. Oh, I thought we were talking about like a Salzburg kind of film. Salzburg? Who are those brothers that make horrible films? Oh, oh, Friedberg and Seltzer. But those aren't Seltzer. exploitation. Those are like... The, or those aren't... I, thought, I guess those are those are like Z movies. I know. I thought they made a movie called B Movie. No, I don't think that so. That was a parody of B films. Maybe. When you said that. Maybe, this but I don't think This is getting pointlessly so. confused. This video is done. Jerry Seinfeld, B Movie. Watch it.